All right, I'd like to welcome you to this edition of EMU Today TV. My name is Mark S. Lee, and I'm your host, and our very first one of the new year. So I want to wish you all a happy new year. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season, and we're so pleased to join, have joined us today, uh, Dean Muhammad Katu. He's the Dean of the Game Above College of Engineering and Technology. About a very new program, a program that was recently launched. It's called the Fundamentals of Cybersecurity. And we're going to get more information about that over the next several minutes. Dean, thank you very much for joining me. How are you doing? I am doing great. Thank you for having me and Happy New Year to you and, and to your audience. Thank you. So glad to have you. And let's talk. We, we know that cybersecurity, we're going to talk about this and unpack this conversation in the next few moments. Uh, we know that cybersecurity is an, has been an issue. We've heard a lot about hacking and you know, we're, we're certainly in a technology-enabled society, if you will. We're all involved in technology. So talk to us briefly about the uh, cybersecurity program certificate that was recently announced. Yeah, uh, I think we do recognize as a, as a college and as a university the great need that the community and the industry has for having more specialized uh, people in the area of cybersecurity. And uh, we were among the first in the nation to introduce the program uh, of undergraduate program, but was then called information security uh, way, I think almost 20 years ago now. So it makes uh, it makes a lot of sense that the uh, this need has mag you know has become uh, multiplied many times over the past 20 years with so much access to data and so much focus on the security of the information of the public at large uh, for private and public entities alike. Um, uh, it, it becomes important that we will, that to have more and more people having the right skills uh, for the right jobs in, in the marketplace. Uh, so we we do have a bachelor and a master's and a PhD degree uh, deg degrees in in cybersecurity, uh, but there is the need for entry level jobs is still great in the area of cybersecurity that we thought having a certificate program that prepare uh, prepare our students to to get jobs uh, with the completion of such a certificate was an important. Uh, necessity in, in the community and in the state uh, at large. So that was so the rationale of introducing the certificate. So, so explain to people the difference between the certificate program and the more traditional four-year program, or the more traditional four-year program, if you will, so they understand the fundamental difference between the two. Right. A four-year year degree is a general degree that uh, prepares you for the broad discipline uh, of cybersecurity. It is definitely what we recommend for the normal student to come and, and pursue. Uh, it's a fundamental pillar uh, for your career, for your future, for your progress. However, in, a, in, in certain situations where a, uh, a particular industry or a set of industries, as is the case here, uh, are interested in a particular set of skills in uh, a very short period of time. So the, in, the the industry out there is looking for some people to have the talent now rather than four years from now. Uh, so we in, in you know in situations like that, and also in situations where a group of the public also wants to retune their skills. Uh, to meet uh, the, the requirements of a particular uh, job or a particular discipline that is much needed now in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, that is when uh, we introduce certificates like this. Uh, it's a shorter period of time. This particular certificate is a six month, uh, a six month period where you know basically it will enable you you take the content, of what would be the equivalent of uh, six courses uh, on campus in those six months. And uh, those six courses at least will uh, enable you to get a reasonable good job in the cybersecurity do domain. So um, having basically a certificate program targets a, a very 
well-defined set of skills to meet a very well-defined need in the marketplace now and in the near future. And that's we, why we thought the certificate would fit better. It is, is my understanding it's a virtual program, is that correct? Yes, uh, the, the program will be offered as synchronous online, which means okay. it, is, it is virtual. Uh, you can take it anytime. Uh, um, uh, you know, you, you can take it uh, anywhere. You don't have to come to campus, but you will be live uh, meeting your instructor uh, through platforms like the one we're doing here, like Zoom or something, you know, some other online platform where you will communicate with your instructor. And it's my understanding there's a wide array of topics to be covered. Uh, kind of give us a brief overview from, again, cybersecurity fundamentals, for example, is one area. What are the other areas that will be covered over the six-month period as part of this uh, certificate program? The it, It's... Uh... It is still meant to be an entry, uh, prepare the, the students for jobs that are entry level in nature. Uh, mm -hmm. So it will cover uh, you know, the fundamentals of cybersecurity, network security, uh, some programming aspects, uh, also coding uh, that are essential to uh, the cybersecurity uh, discipline and the cybersecurity field that will help someone who is assuming again an entry level uh, position. Uh, I should also focus that uh, on that this certificate will have uh, its own kind of capstone where we integrate these skills together uh, and uh, also make sure that they are well rounded and that, that we embed in them certain soft skills of presenting, uh, of how you present yourself in uh, this community and in this uh, industry. Uh, so it's a well-rounded uh, certificate that will enable you to enter this uh, uh, discipline that is extremely needed in the in the community now. Well, yes, it does. It's definitely needed. We again, uh, just even over the holiday season, there were situations where there were some cybersecurity issues. Uh, during the holiday season. So this is an awesome program. And it's my understanding, Dean, that this was made as a result of a $1.6 million gift from Game Above. Is that right? That is correct. That is correct. We uh, we are very blessed and very thankful uh, to our friends uh, at uh, Game Above uh, who, are, who continue to uh, uh, show their strong support and strong encouragement for the major milestones our college has have been has been uh, making uh, recently, and uh, giving their generous support for us to continue our uh, marathon, frankly, advancement uh, in academia and in engineering and technology disciplines. So it's uh, we did we received a 1.6 million dollar from Game Above, a part of which it will be dedicated for the launch and success of this certificate program. Uh, this uh, will, you know, a part of it will include building the infrastructure uh, for the certificate program, as well as offering some scholarships for students who are uh, needing the certificate to uh, transform their lives and, and, their, uh, and, and their families uh, through well-paying jobs uh, that a certificate like this uh, will provide to them. Uh, another part of the uh, another very important part of the of this gift is also enhancing research in uh, the area of cybersecurity. So uh, mm -hmm. we are developing new labs, uh, you know, uh, you know, from vehicle cybersecurity to drone cybersecurity, uh, hiring or recruiting uh, uh, PhD students to perform research. Uh, we have also a postdoctoral that actually will help coordinate some of the research in the field. Uh, so uh, it's a well-integrated effort to advance our knowledge in this very important field. Has it officially launched yet? Or if not, when is it scheduled to launch? Uh, we are due this week in a couple of days for an open webinar, uh, which is an information session about the certificate program the deadline for applying for the certificate approaches fast towards the end of this month. Uh, in early February, 
And we are planning a launch of the actual instruction on March 4th of this year. That is awesome. And, and you know, as I, as you're talking, is this type of program, we have a couple of minutes remaining, but is this program unique to EMU, the certificate program, or do we find many other institutions also offering something similar to this as well? There are other institutions offering um certificates in, in cybersecurity or closely related fields. However, we think that our uh, well-balanced and well-integrated cybersecurity has uh, a niche. We've, we've really consulted with top um, industrial leaders uh, before we put the curriculum together uh, to make sure that we actually tackle uh, or present skills that are mostly needed in industry now and today. Uh, and our industrial uh, leaders who are in the area here in Southeast Michigan have been very supportive in giving, giving us their advice uh, and uh, their talent and telling us uh, the most relevant subjects and uh, material that we should include in this certificate to make it uh, uh, a leading certificate in this field. Uh, in this area. How, how many students are you hoping to get engaged as part of this program initially? Is there a specific number at this point, or is it more kind of build that plane as we go, so to speak? Right. I think the day, uh, what we are targeting now is taking 15 students uh, mm -hmm. every six months. If we think there is a demand higher than that, we may offer it more frequently. As of now, we are our target is to offer it twice a year. Uh, so uh, we like to get uh, 30 students a year as a target. But if we think there is more demand, we are capable to offer it more frequently as needed. Well, Dean Katu, I want to thank you very much for trying to give us an overview of this program, the Fundamentals of Cybersecurity Certificate Program. And it's my understanding, again, one more time, there's a webinar that's upcoming uh, to kind of give people more information make a register at this webinar as well. Is that correct? That is correct. That is okay. correct. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time and uh, appreciate you joining us and giving us, giving us more information about that. Go out make it a great day. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's really uh, great to see you again, Mark, and uh, I hope to see you in the near future as well. Absolutely. What we're going to do is just take a quick break and, and the graduation for December was very recently just beyond the rear view, rear view mirror. So we're going to sit back and we guys let you watch this video. And when we come back, we're going to talk about a student-produced podcast that was just launched recently. We'll be right back. Today is a very special day for all of you who are receiving degrees from Eastern Michigan University. You made it. You've earned something that will open doors for you now and way into the future which will always be part of your success. You will remember this day because it marks a significant achievement on your part and the beginning of great things. It marks an inflection point in the trajectory of your lifelong learning. A lot of hard work and dedication went into getting this degree. Um, you know, just putting in a lot of time and effort. So, uh, appreciate everybody that's around me and uh, appreciate Eastern Michigan. To be a graduate today, it's a high honor. I'm very happy and I will bring the color of EMU everywhere I go. Go Eagles. I encourage you, all of you, to show your eagle confidence and eagle pride as you move forward to the next chapter. We know your journey will take you in many different directions, but remember, this is always your family and you always are welcome back home. Graduates, it is now time to turn your tassel from the right side to the left side, symbolizing you are now a college graduate and congratulations to each and every one of you on this wonderful milestone. All right, welcome back to EMU Today TV. I hope you enjoyed that video from December's graduation. And let me just say this, congratulations to all of the graduates, you know, hey, score. Soar, your eagles, soar higher. We're proud of all of you. Go out, make a change. And we're going to continue the conversation with two very special guests. 
And I'd like to welcome uh, Professor Lolita Cummings, and she's the Professor of Public Relations here at Eastern Michigan University, and also Ms. Melissa uh, Thrasher, and uh, she's the Executive Director of Media Relations and Social Media about a very unique podcast called Enlighten You. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to turn it over to them to let them tell you what it is. So, Professor uh, Dr. Cummings and, and Melissa, thanks for joining me as part of EMI Today TV. Thank you so much for having us, Mark. We really appreciate it. Appreciate bringing you on the show. Um, we're excited. Absolutely. We're excited about Enlighten You. It is um, Eastern's new podcast for students. It's focused on mental health, and it is all about students. Um, we started this, we started our first episode in September, as a matter yes. of fact. Um, yes. We're about to tape the one, um, our new one for, for January. Um, but every episode is focused on a different area of student, student mental health. And we know that it is um, areas that are of interest to students because it's so student focused that we have a student advisory board who tells us what they need. Um, we have a focus group where students actually um, watch our episodes and tell us how we're doing. And we have a student intern who has the her finger on the pulse of all the students and what they want and what they need. So we're really excited about it. Yes. You know, Melissa, and as I'm listening to the leader talk, um, obviously we're coming out of the pandemic, you know, a year ago, two years ago, whatever it was. And I'm assuming that's the one of the challenges coming out of the pandemic is this thing called mental health and yes. students' well-being. Is that kind of give me the backstory of how this came about? And uh, you know who came up with the who came up with the idea of enlightening you? Well, you know, Mark, that's a great question. Um, Lolita had mentioned earlier in our conversation that it started with a student, and she had a great conversation with a former EMU grad about coming up with some type of concept to help educate uh, students about mental health. Because, as you know, as you and I know, mental health is a crisis among a lot of universities across the nation. And so they got to talking and um, Lolita, you might wanna correct me, but this has been a few years in the making. Yes. And so um, Lexi is her name. She actually graduated, but we haven't forgot about Lexi laying the foundation for us. Lolita brought the idea to uh, myself and, and Walter and our team. And uh, we thought it would be a great great concept for us to pursue and so that's when the concept or the the conversation happened and now you have enlightened you and you know, typically go ahead mark oh, please go ahead go ahead i was go just going to say um to add on to what uh lolita was mentioning we usually have a mental health expert and we've been fortunate to use mental health experts from campus come to the show mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so we typically have a mental health uh expert and we also have a student talk about their journey with that particular topic. And so we like to think of this as a solution-based platform, a solution-based podcast for students and parents and you know everyone who wants to listen. And that was my question. And, and Lolita, I'm gonna come back over to you to, to take to the next level. Um, what are some of the topics that you have addressed and you hope to address moving forward, because again, this is a very serious conversation. It's a very serious challenge that all of us in some way, shape or form uh, have had challenges in the space, I'm sure. So what are some of the topics that the students or the advisory board or the team at large have come up with that you addressed thus far? And what would you like to get, get into moving forward as well? You're, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is a very serious topic. Um, when, when we talk about there being a mental health crisis in this country, it's real. And our students are certainly not exempt from it. Um, some of the larger issues and more common issues that affect students are anxiety and depression. And so we started there. Um, and it was, it was really interesting because during the pandemic, there were two students, Jessica and Jada Turner, who had written a song about mental health 
And when we decided to do this podcast after the pandemic was over, Melissa remembered those students. We reached out to them and they created a song. We asked them to make it upbeat. We asked them to make, to make it encouraging and we asked them to make it sophisticated. And they did all of those things. And so they created a very specific song that we use for the intro and the outro of our podcast, along with the music video. It was it was quite a time that we had. So so we did that, but we covered anxiety and depression first because those are the most common issues among students. And then we went to cover the LGBTQ plus community because unfortunately that community is often discriminated against. And so we used once we, we brought to the table a student who actually trans transitioned while she was in my class. And so she came to the table with, again, like Melissa said, we always have a student and a mental health professional at the table for every episode. So she came to the table, Batty came to the table for that. After that, you know, we always know, um, and we did this, this one came out kind of around, right before, um, around um, Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving is the biggest drinking day of the year. They call it Blackout Thursday. And so we brought another former student to the table. Her name is Chrissy Zavikar. Um, because she has she had struggled with alcoholism, but had overcome it. But she had struggled with years, and it, but her and her drinking had escalated in college. So we brought her to the table for that, so we could talk about alcoholism and we could talk about addiction. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, that took us around the holiday time with overspending. So overspending. then we brought in financial <laughs> literacy for that, and we talked about ways responsible spending. Um, we tape our shows a month in advance, and so we're about to tape a show now, and we're doing that one. Um, actually, we did another one on being overcommitted, and something that we all know about, right? We yeah. did oh, yeah. show overcommitted, yeah. um, mm -hmm. so we did that one. And the show we're about to talk about now, we're about to record now, is on Compassionate Classrooms. So that's where we are right now. So that Compassionate mm -hmm. Classrooms, that show will come out in February. All of our shows drop on the 15th of the month on EMU's YouTube channel, as well as all the major pop podcast platforms. Now, where do we go going forward? Um, mm -hmm. We're going to talk about social media harms because yes. that is something that's important. So that's probably going to be our next show. Beyond that, grading anxiety. Um, most of the students that'll take us around midterm time, you as a, as an instructor at Eastern know about grading anxiety. There are a lot of different issues that affect our students, um, whether it be food ins insecurity, housing insecurity, all the different areas. But the important thing is that we let our students tell us what is affecting us, them, and then we bring it to the table. You know, Melissa, and, and, and the way the leaders is describing it, explaining it, I love the fact that you let you also talk about solutions. And but these are not, you know, I'm an instructor, the leader, you're an instructor. We all we teach in some way, shape, or form. And as an instructor, you know, we want to certainly engage our students and have them come up with the right solutions or the best solutions. It sounds like in this podcast, you're doing something very similar, which is but you you're getting the solution through the eyes of someone who's gone through it. And to yes. me, that's very unique. How, what, how, how, how is that being responded to, Melissa, in terms of people see the podcast? How do they respond to that emotion, that story coming from the student's perspective as opposed to Professor Cummings or Professor Lee or whatever the case might be? I think that's another great question. And to answer your question, I think it's because it's so relatable. You know, these, mm -hmm. these students have stories and students are telling us, we're hearing great feedback from students that they identify with these stories that are being told. So we know it's working. Aside from students, I actually got a comment just yesterday about our financial podcast and how one of my old girlfriends, she said, oh my gosh, you guys need to share that with the entire EMU community because yes. so many people can benefit from the advice yes. you know, that the, the uh, expert had shared. So we know that it's making a difference uh, from the emails that Lolita and I receive. Um, she had mentioned that we have an advisory committee, um, but we come into contact with so many people that are saying, oh my gosh, I learned so much. Or, you know, I had one student that said that their person, or I'm sorry, their sister was transitioning and she learned a lot from the LGBTQ um, podcast. And so we know that it's working. It's great information. 
And again, we're glad that we have this platform, you know, that can help people in, in their um, well-being. You know, Lolita, and, and, you know, you've been, you've been an instructor for quite a while at the institution. Um, and I'm sure that I always like to tell my students that it's an honor for me to be standing in front of you. Oh my gosh, yes. But oh. as much as you think you're learning from me, I always tell them I'm learning from them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And is, do you share a similar sentiment as you think about this podcast? Melissa and I have gotten really close. We're actually friends um, through this podcast. And that's one of the things that we say all the time. We learn so much. You know, we yes. learn so much through the conversation on the podcast. But it's not just that. It's the conversations after the cameras have been rolling. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I can't tell you. And I, I think for me, what, what I learned the most, the show that I learned the most on was about the LGBTQ plus community, right? I mean, I've always been supportive, but there were certain things that I did not know. And I think so many of us wait until someone in that community educates us. And so we got that, but it also encouraged us to do some research and, 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 and learn more on our own. But through these conversations, and I think that's how we all get to know one another another we get yeah. to understand one another we get to you know be compassionate about everyone's and empathetic about everyone else's situations it's these kind of conversations and it also I think it's also important that students coming on with you know all of their vulnerabilities all of their stories um all of their their struggles it lets other students know that they're not alone they're yeah. not alone and then the expert that we have always shares resources that, that can be, you know, obtained on campus so they know they're not alone and that there are places where they can get some help. You know, I, Melissa mentioned earlier that we use experts who are already on campus. And I'm an old church girl and I remember them saying everything you need is already in the house. Well, <laughs> everything is already in, on Eastern's campus is already in the house. And we just utilize what we have to help those who need it. Yeah. We have about a minute remaining or so, but I want to give you a chance to say one more time, where can people view this uh, video or listen to the podcast or see the podcast, where is it Where is it being available? Where is it distributed to all? Another great question. So it is being distributed on EMU's YouTube channel. So please like us, visit the EMU YouTube channel and, and follow Enlighten You and all Spotify platforms. You can mm -hmm. visit um, and listen to the podcast. So we're really excited and uh, stay tuned for another podcast around the 15th of each month. And, and it's free. And it's free. And, and the resources free. on campus are free. So, yeah. yeah. You know, let, let me just stay in close before I, I go out for the day. Let me just say this. Uh, this we, You see a smiling, but this is a very serious conversation. Uh, we are living in challenging times. And this is cut to the chase. I'm not talking politically. I'm not getting that going down that path. I'm small times in general. And we have so many people who are reaching out. And it's important that you go check out this, this, this podcast and spread the word to other people because we have so many people in need. So as I go out today, let me just say, I would encourage you all to do that. Melita, Melissa, I want to thank you both. I acknowledge both of you for your hard work and bringing us together along with the Student Advisory Board and everyone involved. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you again for having us, Mark. We appreciate you. Yeah, Absolutely. thank you so much, Mark. My pleasure. For all of you tuning in, we want to thank you for your time this month, and we will check you out next time on EMU Today TV. Go on, make it a great day, make it a great week, and we'll see you soon. Bye.